everyone, my name is Sydney and today I'm going to be discussing Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. This book was so much fun to read. This book is the first in the Infernal Devices series and it's kind of a spin-off of Cassandra Clare's Mortal Instruments series. So this book, this series just has new characters involved um, but they're still in the same world where shadow hunters, downworlders, werewolves, vampires, fairies, warlocks, all that jazz exists. So it's just so much fun to read. I absolutely love this book and I loved meeting these new characters. Will Herondale. I like him a lot. <laughs> but if you haven't read this book, it's about um, this character, Tessa. Um, we follow her and she comes to London because her brother Nathaniel has asked her to come there. But when she arrives in London, she is basically imprisoned by the Dark Sisters. While she is under imprisonment with both those women, she discovers that she is a shape-changer, shape-shifter. And she's the only one who is able to do that. No one is able to shift into other people like she's able to. In a way they described her kind of like a medium. It's so cool. This book was awesome and I love that it's hardback. In all my Mortal Instruments series, all of my books are in softcover, which is fine because I love softcover, but I love hardback too. It feels so nice. And the actual writing, oh my god, it feels so good. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. Anyway, I need to stop like obsessing over it, but you definitely should read this book. I would definitely recommend reading the first three books in the Mortal Instruments series before you pick up this book, but you can pick up this book first and then go into the first three of the Mortal Instruments series. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. But yeah, I'm going to go into spoilers, so read it, come back, and we can talk. Here we go in three, two, one. This is kind of funny but I just wanted to include this. I read the first 40 pages of this book and I really needed a nap. I was so tired from whatever I had done the day before that I really needed a nap. So after the first 40 pages I was out like a light, I fell asleep and um, my dreams <laughs> were nightmares but it was the cool kind of nightmare where you woke up like whoa that felt like I was in a movie or that felt like it was a book and oh my god what happened in my dream was so cool I was dreaming about angels <laughs> which is no surprise hey because I was reading Clockwork Angel but what happened was my dreams consisted of some power in the room and there was inverted angel shadows on the walls around me and I was compressed down on the floor there was invisible hands on my chest clawing at me keeping me down to the ground I wasn't able to get up it was the weirdest freaking dream ever but I just thought it was really cool that there was some involvement of angels in there I know, really weird story, but I think it's pretty cool. So let's move on. I have not read Cassandra Clare's books in a little while because I read other books before this one. But I was so happy to go back to a Cassandra Clare book. I really love how she writes. I really do. Her writing is just so beautiful and descriptive. It really draws you in. From the minute you start reading, it draws you in. If I put the book down for a second and I pick it up the next day or I pick it up in a couple more hours, as soon as I start reading I'm just immediately transformed to this world. So what I loved about this book was we got new characters and I really liked these characters apart from Jessamine. I was not a fan of her. Every time she popped up in conversation I just I wasn't a fan. I thought the I thought the scene where they were in the park though was interesting, how she had that parasol, but 
other than that, I'm really not a fan of her. I hope that her character develops into someone that becomes more empowering. Because you can see that kind of side to her, that she's actually really brave and she's able to fight off demons or fight off people or whatever. But she's just selfish and annoying. So, we'll see if, if she ever changes. We'll see. I really liked Tessa. She was an awesome character to meet. And I really love that she has that clockwork angel necklace. There's some great importance there that I'm so excited to find out about. I really think there's some really grand importance there. Because we we go into that scene where it just comes off her flying. What the heck? And, and saves her against one of the clockwork army members. Like, what? That was so cool. And then at the end, it just comes back to her through the window. And she's like, oh, it's my angel. Just all cash. I don't know if that has some symbolism to do with her mother, possibly. Because we're so confused. I mean, I'm so confused with her family. We don't know who her dad is. She doesn't know who her dad is. Like, was he a demon? Was what? And her mother... I, I don't know what's going on there. Was she Monday? I have a feeling that her mother has some kind of importance to this world. Because reading back, it said, as she was describing her clockwork angel, that it was her mother's. And I really have a feeling that her mother is connected somehow. But then we hear from the Magister, who's not De Quincey, and I thought it was too. It's not De Quincey. It was, um, what's his name? Mortmain? Was it Mortmain? It's the weirdest name ever. Mortmain is the Magister. He is talking about how he kind of made Tessa. What is all that about? He made Tessa. That's, that's bullshit. So I have a feeling that him and Tessa's mother have some kind of... something happened there. I mean, I don't think that he's her father. But I think there's something there. He makes, he's the one who knows how to make clockwork armies. And she is wearing a clockwork angel necklace. There's gotta be some relationship there. Moving on. I love Will Herondale so much. <laughs> First kissing scene. Oh my god. I was like a little fangirl, like reading it and going, oh my god. But then like, he really annoyed me by the end. <laughs> It makes no sense. I love him, but he annoys me. The end where he kissed again, which was cute. But then he goes off and says, but you're not going to expect anything from this relationship, right? We're not going to get married ever. You can't have kids. Like, just putting dirt and shade onto Tessa. I was like, dude, what the fuck? That was so mean and kind of abusive in a way. So... It's kind of making me think that he's a little bit edgy or something's going on or he just does not know how to show his emotions because, honey, if you like us, we want to know that you like us but telling us you like us, you know, giving us a little bit of something, something. I still love him but by that end point, I was like, Jem is way better suited for Tessa just because... Jem is so much kinder, he actually listens to her, actually has proper conversations with her, you know, type thing. But there's something about Will that's just sexy. The way Cassandra Clare is describing his eyes as being blue. There's no symbolism behind wearing blue today. Um. <laughs> but you know what I mean? What? Like, Will, get your shit together and we can talk. But yeah, I like Will a lot. He was a great addition, I think. Yeah. Going on to Jem. What the heck that he has to take demon poison in order to survive? And if he doesn't have it, he'll just die quicker. That was kind of crazy to me because by the end, Nate, who we'll talk about in a second, takes the box that has his demon poison in it. He takes it with him. So Nate, for a couple days, has not had any demon poison, I assume. Yeah, he's fine. Please let me know if I'm wrong, because I have no idea right now. <laughs> I have no idea right now. So, oh my god, with Nathaniel, Nate, whatever the heck you want to call him, 
I knew it. I knew it. Do not trust the bastard Nate Nathaniel. I just knew it from the beginning. I was like, there's something edgy here. Mm -mm -mm. I didn't believe it for a second. He came into the institute. I was like, mm, something's going to happen here. And I was right. He was on his side. He kneeled down to the magister. I'm really confused with him, but I don't like him at all. I don't like him. When we were reading this book and there was mention of a silent brother, Brother Enoch. Enoch? I don't know if that's how you say it. But oh my god, I was so happy. So, reading the Mortal Instruments series, in the second book, all the silent brothers are just murdered. Because fucking Valentine killed all of them. Reading the brother, or that one of them was in here was so awesome. I was so happy to have a bit of that because I really like the silent brothers. There's so much more to them. Another thing which is really interesting is they are referring to Tessa as being a warlock, which I, I really question because she doesn't have a warlock mark on her and she's the only one who's able to shift. I really want to know what she is. I feel like she's not a warlock. And another thing that was really, that I was really happy that we got in this book was mention of Church the cat. I was so happy to have the cat back. I love that we get mention of these characters that are part of the other series too. So there is that overlap. And also how Charlotte, which is another character we introduced to, how Charlotte is talking about um, the Lightwoods, how they want to take over the Institute. And obviously they end up taking over the Institute because in the Mortal Instruments series, it's their institute. So there was some funny things that I highlighted and I wanted to share them. This one was funny but also kind of... I'm raising my eyebrows. Tessa. She had never thought about her name much before, but when he said it, it was as if she were hearing it for the first time. The hard T, the caress of the double S, the way it seemed to end on a breath. Her own breath was very short when she said softly, Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amusement glittered in his eyes. With a sort of horror, Tessa realised that she had simply said his name for the sake of saying it. She hadn't actually had a question. <laughs> It's so something I would do. Uh, this is another one on page 115. Jessamine recoiled from the paper as if it were a snake. A lady does not read the newspaper. The society pages, perhaps, or the theatre news, not this filth. But you are not a lady, Jessamine, Charlotte began. Dear me, said Will, such harsh truths so early in the morning cannot be good for the digestion. What I mean, Charlotte said, correcting herself, is that you are a shadow hunter first and a lady second. Okay, let's just make that clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Cassandra Clare is funny. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed Clockwork Angel. And if you haven't read it, I definitely think that you should. It's an awesome book and you get to meet some awesome characters, which was really fun to dive into. So, yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to read the fourth book in the Immortal Instruments series before I pick up the second book, Clockwork Prince. Um, but hopefully you'll see me soon. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time, as usual. Bye!